And I believe that we're live. I believe... I've got this weird feeling that I've forgotten something important. <laughs> so I'm just double checking all the stream settings, all the stuff like that. Yeah, I think we're good. Alright then, let's do this. we got lots of bananas in chat. Thank you ever so much. Means that we're live. Is it me or the jungle... Trees. They just look a bit different from this angle all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, as the night is setting. They just look weird to me all of a sudden. Strange. Strange. So yeah, welcome back to another live stream. I, I've, I've just got this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. And I'm just looking at my settings. I'm looking at chat. I'm looking, is this thing going? Is that thing going? They're, uh, they all appear to be good. Right, we're going to drop some supplies off, pick some things up today. Okay, those are empty. And then get going. Clammy says music is nice. Yeah, listening to uh, Old Sorcery again. As this didn't get chewed up in YouTube's copyright system. I'll have to send them another email and say, uh, seems to be good. Can we get like a little friendly handshake agreement on this or something? Because uh, I would like to continue using this music and, of course, uh, expand the library of music that we have available for us on our streams. Cutie Panda Pie is here for five months. Thank you ever so much. Appreciate it. Hope you're going to enjoy the stream today. Uh, which of these materials am I actually going to need? Nothing so far. I only have a small palette, so it's not going to be too confusing. Uh, that is part of what I need. Don't need obsidian. Uh, yeah, really don't need anything else from here at the moment. That one's empty, I'll put it away. Cool, next destination is the Never. X, didn't see the video, what happened? Uh, we'll just go watch it after the stream, dude. And uh, you'll see where we're at. Jod, uh, Jod Reagan says... Not feeling so swift today, I'm just going to listen while I'm half asleep. Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. I mean, I can't say I'm under the weather today, but... Uh, I remember last... Well, I say last year, like earlier in the year when I was doing some proper cutting. Um, after, like... Well, I, I, I did it for a long time, so I don't really remember, like, the transition, if you like. But I remember it getting, like, really tough at some times. Like, some workouts were pretty difficult. Wow, totally out of blackstone. That is a problem. Might have to go steal some from my own shop then. Yeah, the workouts could get pretty rough sometimes, some days, you know. Uh, having less energy and whatnot. There was a lot of piglins down there. And this is like, I think, my eighth day now. And I really felt it earlier today. I really felt it. I'm sitting down now at my desk instead of standing to rest a bit more. But yeah, I feel like if I just continue doing this, it'll, it'll probably just get difficult, which is what I remember. I remember it being a challenge to keep doing it every day at one point. Whereas this time, it was like, oh no, this is a piece of cake. But now that I'm like seven or eight days into it, now it's starting to feel like, oh, it's not so not so great. Uh, Kirka Games says, how's your elbow doing? Just no progress. Just no progress with it. When I go, when I go back to the physio, I'm going to be like, look, can we think about medication or something? Like, is there alternatives? Because this ain't working. Okay, I don't want to take it all from one chest, actually. I think I want to take about half and half. And yes, it automatically restocks. So, so yeah. Uh, anyway, just, just feeling like a little bit tough earlier. But tomorrow, I'm going to have a big old meal. And uh, I think what I need is once or twice a week, I need like a, a restock day, right? Because when you're eating normally for ages, you, you've got plenty of energy. It feels good. It's, it's not surprising that the first few days of cutting, you're going to be all right. But once you start getting, I don't know, deeper into the the energy reserves, then it gets tough. All right, let's fly, fly, fly. I always seem to forget that there is a portal over at the Potion Brewery area. I just tend to come through this one here. Oh, 
Lots of people in chat just saying, hey, hello. What happened to my elbow, says Dr. Pugme? Well, um, I've got RSI from, you know, using the computer and whatnot. It was brought on by playing uh, PlayStation games on my on my uh, treadmill. Just, just the, you know, repetitiveness of holding my arms in a position while I'm on the treadmill, like, and then using the buttons on the controller, like, did something to it that it didn't like. And I haven't recovered from it. And, uh, let's chuck all that in there. I don't actually need these two then. So now, if ever I do that, I don't really play games on there anymore. I've been put off. <laughs> um, but I, I will, you know, sort of raise my arms up, if you like, and uh, move them about a lot more and make sure they're stretched and warmed up. Chris Addy says, now that's just mad. What, the injury? It sucks, is what the injury is. I mean, if it's not gonna get if it's not gonna get any better long term, I've got to start thinking about other strategies for fitness because I absolutely love bodybuilding, and I just really wanted to do that. And I've got all this equipment for it, and I might have to like switch to something different, like calisthenics, or uh, you know, just body weight only training. I don't know, but it's frustrating. It's been like over half a year now. I've been struggling with it. What's RSI? Repetitive strain injury. Like, you can get that from working at a computer like I am right now. You know, if you're just here constantly making the same little movements with your arms and they're not positioned right, they end up causing aggravation and strain to your muscles. I don't think bodybuilding isn't good for an injured arm slash elbow, says Kurt Games. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what is and what isn't. I know some moves clearly aggravate it and some don't. So I'm still doing a little bit of this and that. Um, but it's like it's working out makes it feel better in a weird way. But I've been advised not to. I think you know, like, how do you get better? But like, how do your muscles? Uh, get relieved by movement, by stretching, by using them. Obviously, putting them under heavy loads a little different, but because it means I'm active and I'm moving my arms, it's different from just being static at the computer. When you're static at the computer, that's when the real aches kick in. Like after I get up, after sitting down for a while, it's like, oh, there it is. Whereas if I've just been, you know, moving about indoors, outdoors, whatever, that's that's when it's like it feels better when you're active. Anyway, I'm hoping I'm hoping maybe there, there's some medicine that can help or something because I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> to be frank, I'm getting sick of it. You mean kind of how like some exercise can improve certain lung diseases like asthma? Yeah, I can't speak too much to that because I don't know specifically about asthma in that way. Um, but what I mean is... If you've got a muscle, if you've got a, like a, a pain in your arm, right? There are different types of pain. You have to learn what they are. Sometimes it's a, you know, my muscle has been ripped in half pain and, you know, it needs to be put in a cast and repaired. Most of the time you get like a aches and pains and soreness that's relatively mild. And that usually can be fixed by some stretching, some moving about. Do yoga, says Taslim. I already do yoga every day. Um, yoga is a great way of addressing those sorts of bodily issues, right? So it's kind of like that. It's like being active and stretching it out and moving it about relieves it. But then when I go back to like, okay, at the keyboard, that's when it starts to hurt again. Right, I'm going to have some tea. We got Average Mod in here for 27 months. I thought this Wednesday it... I thought this was Wednesday and it shared already. Oh well, on to 28. Uh, no, today is Friday. But thank you ever so much for the uh, subscription. Appreciate it. Uh, Preston Boy says, I wish I had this level of talent. I don't know to which talent you are perceiving and uh, talking to, but like everyone is capable of developing their own talent. When you see someone else, when you see someone else who can do something that you think is really great and cool and interesting, know that there's usually, like, a lot of time and effort that goes behind things like that. Like, uh, with, with guitarists, 
I'll never, I'll never forget this comment. I always remember this comment that we got in chat once, where someone went, someone said we were talking about gifted guitarists, and they said, but what about people who can just pick it up and play it? And I'm like, well, who are these people? I, I don't, I don't believe that you can just, without knowing what a guitar is, pick it up and play it and be a, be a genius on the guitar. I don't believe in that. I think what's more likely is that some people are geared towards perhaps seeing other people play guitar and kind of sussing it out more than maybe your average person does, right? Everyone's got some sort of skill. Everyone's got something that they're probably better at than the average person. So I don't believe in this sort of exceptionalism that some kids are just like geniuses when they see an instrument. I just believe they're introduced to it in the right way. They've got the right approach to learning. They learn fast. And uh, and then they're good at playing an instrument or something. So if you see someone who's good at something, right, know that there could be a lot that went in behind that, right? It's not like it's just somehow there for them and it's not there for you. You might just have to do a bunch of work to get to that level. Uh, and at the same time... There's another point I was going to add on to this, but I kind of just forgot for a second. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, uh, you know, like, you have to practice. Oh, jeez, I felt like the other thing I was going to say was rather important. Now my brain's gone blank. It does that a lot when we chat. Talent is a myth that can handicap folks who don't learn how to develop skills, says Winnie T. Ford. Very nicely put, very nicely put. Um, and, I, and I do think to some extent there is natural ability. There is, you know, clearly some people are born with advantages in particular areas than others, right? But it's it, it should never be seen as like something you can't obtain if you don't work hard for something. So, yeah, I remember the other point now, right? The other point is that, like, I go and watch guitar videos of, like, Daryl Dimebag and other great guitarists doing really cool stuff. And it gets me psyched to play guitar. I'm like, oh, God, the things you can do with this instrument is so cool. I can't do what they're doing. Probably ever ain't going to be able to play a Daryl Dimebag solo. But one of the things I noticed in the comments is people make jokes out of, like, I saw this and quit guitar. And it was like, what? <laughs> Why would you do that? And some people get this psychology in their head of, I'll never be as good as that. Well, what if you were like, what if you were just a fraction shy of that? You know? Like, don't don't ever tell yourself like you ain't good enough for something. Because you, you could be, you could be almost as good as Daryl Dimebag. Or maybe not even halfway as good. But like, maybe halfway as good a guitar as Daryl Dimebag is extremely enjoyable. I love playing guitar. I am definitely back into playing guitar again and just doing it in a way where I just do it for fun. Because I got a bit regimented and drilled with it last time. Like it were training or something. Anyway, as I'm getting back into it, it's just it's just fun and that's what you should like focus on doing and having fun. And so don't let like other people being good at something demotivate you. That's not the right way to look at it. If you see people doing something awesome, that should motivate you. Because that's, that's, that's your ticket for inspiration right there. Nothing's stopping you from doing the same thing other than if you tell yourself you can't. I feel stupid now realising I had the stream on mute. For how long? <laughs> for how long? I think the people that actually type those comments think contrary of that, but the comments ends up putting them down the motivation of others says spirits maker it could be yeah it could be a bit of a joke right like uh they're so good i quit haha -ha. but then someone else might see it and be like yeah why should i even bother which it, it saddens me every time i see those sorts of comments i'm just like no this is for anyone this is for everyone like just pick up and play pick up and play today right let's um let's experiment with because as you've seen, I'm putting down blocks in this area, and clearly I know where I want to go with it, right? I want to experiment a little bit. I also want to grab some scaffolding to make use of. Uh, Charmez says it's their first time watching a Twitch live stream. Well, welcome, dude. Welcome. Hmm.
Uh, Raffi Warren says, in my opinion, talent is something that helps you learn, but you can learn without talent too. Yeah, I agree. And um, what talent is could be perhaps genetics. Um, we've all seen, you know, we all, we all know there's like children that grow up clearly gifted in some direction towards something, but I don't believe they've just inherently got it. I just think they're advantaged for particular reasons, which we could describe as talent. So if you don't have the talent, you can still learn how to do something. A lot of us probably learn to do something that's maybe a bit mundane or boring that we don't really think of as a skill, but maybe you get good at. I'm trying to think of an example, but like, I don't know, there's <laughs> cleaning your house, you know, World Hoover Championships, where are you at? I don't know. There's probably like there's probably things you learn to do. Maybe you got a job and like you're good with the spreadsheets and keeping track of the numbers and all that sort of stuff, right? That's a skill that you learn, but maybe you wouldn't be too enthusiastic about just doing for the sake of it. I have a talent of getting bored frequently, says Blank. If you get bored, you've got to do something with your time. I'm never bored, honestly. I am never bored in this life. I don't know what boredom is anymore. I've, I've been bored in the past. Lack of focus, lack of knowing what you want to do. When you know yourself better, you know what you want to do with your time. But boredom don't come round too often. Uh, D Wonderful says I'm not buying that. I'm dead serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Like boredom is. I think one thing that also helps with that is that I do practice meditating. When you can become complacent or content would probably be a better word with just sitting with your inner thoughts like that whole world is you know just a calm calmer place and you can just kind of stay there easily whenever I'm like stuck I don't know like maybe at an airport or um, wherever in a car on a car journey like and, and it's never too much of a bother like when you're a kid and you're impatient it's just you know, I'll be happy to look outside at the trees or whatever, like... I never really feel boredom anymore. A bit hard to describe, really, but it's something like that. Just being being content, I think, is probably the word. Like, if you're content, then when when things are perhaps dull compared to what they might normally be, you just kind of realise, eh, this, this ain't really a big deal, like... and just feel fine with it. Okay, so what I am doing is obviously trying to ascertain if I want to make that basement. Now, the transition bit here might need some work, because that's a bit flat. I'm not sure how we would change that. But what do you think, peeps? It's We've got to cover over this bit, and then it will be dark. I think when it's darker, it will probably regain some respect. It's going to regain some respect, peeps. I don't know. If it's very mar uh, dark, mobs will spawn, says AS. Uh, no, we're using slabs down here, so they won't be able to spawn. Which is why I did it that way. Looks great. I love the moodiness, says Evil Pun Punkin. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I must say, though, like if... Uh, you know, in the past, like something like this would be something I would do in like one big go. Well, maybe not so much in the past. Like, There's been projects, maybe not on this scale, where I've done everything at once and then started to build it, which takes so much time and effort, and so this time around it's like, we'll do it bit by bit. And you know, when you get to a part of the structure like this, it's like, oh, I wish I had like, you know, three or four more blocks in that direction, then we could open it up, make it feel a little a little better, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to work. So, where we have started to cover this roof, you know, I kind of want to avoid just spamming blackstone everywhere, essentially. I think what we'll do is uh, rip these blocks out. Good palette X, it disconnects for me a minute, so what did I miss? Oh, okay. I don't know, we were just waffling. Yeah, the palette, the palette's alright down here, isn't it? You know, maybe I should put some of the polished ones in this palette as well up here, but then I kind of wanted to separate the floor from the ceiling by using different materials there, although you can see I've mixed in a bit around here, so might not be the worst idea. Oh dear, oh dear. Y 
Yeah, I think I can see a way to make this bit work a little better in our favour, but yeah, it kind of works. And then when you come down to here, that definitely looks better than this, but it's just it blends in too much. So when it comes to stairs, I think we've only really got one black stair, haven't we? Nether brick. Mmm. Nether brick. Let's uh let's look at our old stair options. So there's your darkest. Now dark oak stairs and nether brick are the other two that are close. Hmm. Hmm. I don't I don't really want to introduce wood, but it might work. So we'll try that one first, and then we'll try some nether brick. Red nether brick gives a good atmosphere too. True, but, you know, we, we're rocking this pretty strong sort of black to green connection down here. And I feel like red's, red's probably... I'm not so sure. Now, we could throw red into the palette, but I think it would need more of a consistent, like, sort of structural feel. Whereas currently what we're dealing with is something that's just going to throw in a little extra. Right, a little extra colour. I think when you're throwing in a little extra colour, it needs to blend in more. When you're putting something big into the structure with colour, then you have the option to introduce it as a another part of the palette. Because you kind of need balance. Sort of need balance going on. I think I might need some slabs here as well. Asuma, what was the most... Cursed thing you've seen in a Discord chat. Not a clue. Cursed thing? Assume your base at cool, says Blaze. Thank you. Thank you. I've been working hard on it. So immediately the wood the wood kinda like pops out as being wooden, where we haven't really had too much wood. I mean there is some up top. Uh how am I gonna there we go. It's also a bit too browny, like just it just it comes straight off. Maybe maybe this is the wrong approach. Maybe I don't need what we're doing here. I could do something subtler with walls. Um, so on the opposite side, we're gonna try another brick. That's an important thought as well, you know. Like you get locked into this this idea of uh, I'm doing this thing, right? I'm, I'm using this shape. What material goes with it? Sometimes you've got to step back and be like, shape is the problem. There we go. Oh, and I also need slabs, right? So, do I got them? I do. Basalt. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. A little bit of basalt could potentially work here. Essentially, this structure is probably just currently too big for its own good. Now that certainly fits in a little easier. But I think it's maybe the shape that's the problem. It doesn't it doesn't feel necessary to introduce like a new material together. So let's try something with basalt. Ah, that one could stay there. Right, that can go that can go in the wood one for now. Because it technically is wood, right? Uh what did I say we'd try? Basalt? Do I even have any? Polish basalt, we got that. And then this is what I'm also thinking of this stuff, so let's give this a try. Uh Lee Burlesque is here with the prime. Thank you ever so much. Appreciate your subscription. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Okay, let's... Uh, let's do that. Hmm. Now I'm thinking I want more of this up here. So now the structure is a lot less invasive. 
You know what? I think I can live with that. Um, this bit might not be so necessary. However, it makes me wonder, like, what about this space? Oh, look at that. Look at that. That certainly helps tie it to this block. Then the stairs become a bit like... What's the point of that? Oh, I feel like I feel like it's that's kind of reasonable. Just that. Maybe this should be regular andesite and not polish, but what do you think, peeps? That work. We got noises in the air. It's Carlu B here for three months saying what's your favourite rock band? Hmm, well I like metal as well as rock. So that kind of blurs the line, like, I don't know where the line between rock and, and metal is, but, you know, I like a lot of music, jeez. A lot of music. I oh, do I have some andesite around, oh, look at that, I've got some andesite around here. The strike with that one. And we got Sarin, 3064, here with the Prime, thank you ever so much, appreciate your subscription. You're exactly right, X. I myself feel this. Yesterday I put in my two weeks at my job and I've had three years and I got an offer at a job that could make a career out of it. But I tell myself I can't pull it off, then I never will. But if I motivate myself, I can thrive and succeed. I, In reading that, I didn't quite follow you 100%. Um, but it sounds like you're in a good spot making a decision. The thing I always say with motivation is like motivation comes and goes. I don't, I don't operate based on motive. I operate based on things I've already figured out. I've figured out that this is what I want to do. I want to be a streamer. I want to be a video creator. So I do the things that are necessary for that each day. And it's less about do I feel like it. Um, because I know it's for me. And your moods, are, your moods swing. They go up and down, right? When you know something's for you, and you stick at it and you work on it, right, through those... Not so easy days. I actually think the smoother one might have been the better choice here. That pops out too much. Oh, maybe just regular stone or stone bricks. No, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna let's mess about here. Let's check the old uh, creative palette. Yeah, when it like you know, I know that I want to do these things, so I turn up and do them. And I've talked about this so many times. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but. Uh, you know, in the past, I've struggled with wanting to stream a little bit. And so I tell myself, no, I, this is what I want to do. I know I want to be a streamer. So on those days where I don't 100% feel like it, I streamed anyway. You know, I, I, took, I took motivation out of it. And the end result is now that I love doing this and that I don't have to worry about motivation and stuff anymore. I just, I turn up and I really enjoy my time here. And it's been, air quotes, successful, because there's a bunch of people watching, right? So if you can figure yourself out, if you can figure out what you want to do, and you can really, like, home in on it and be like, yeah, this is this is my passion, this is what I want to do, and you stick at it, then, you know, forget forget ideas like motivation. Maybe that don't work for anyone, uh, for everyone, but for me, motivation is rarely the reason to do anything. It's like... Motivation is that thing that's there and makes it good when it is, but you can't rely on it. Okay. I would like to try this. Oh, did I put the stone away? Let's go grab some stone. I'm gonna, I've done a lot of, like, inefficient walking back and forth so far. Got to watch out for that. Sometimes it's better to put these supplies right next to where you're working, but uh, we're just figuring out some details. So, Saren, 3064, subscribe with the Amazon Prime, and we've got Spherical Box here, gifting the sub to Daisy May 12. Thank you for the gift into the sub. I appreciate your support in our community. That's very kind of you. We've got Jalapinito <laughs> here with the Prime, and it's 4G with the Prime. Mm. Oh, God. Ugh. Burpee. Burpee. Just managed to hold down a burp. And we've got Rebecca11 gifting subs to Colvier and Major Dishes, Punchal, Tuli Matt. And Malacalypse 23. Thank you for gifting the subs. Appreciate you supporting our community. Uh, Friendilly is here gifting a sub to Shirion. Thank you so much for that gifted sub. Appreciate it. 
Got a uh, question asking if I'm going to play Cyberpunk 2077. Probably not. I think it looks nicer without the polished, actually. Probably not. Um, I've got to admit, I'm a bit curious by the game. I wasn't that excited a while ago, but now that there's like you can't sort of escape it at the moment, right? And you're seeing it a lot. I was thinking it doesn't look that bad. Like but the thing for me is like games are a distraction from the the thing that I really want to do a lot of the time, right? So there's certain types of games that I allow myself to enjoy, like some puzzle games. They're good for the mind, right? They're stimulating, get you thinking, get your brain active. But uh, Stuff like that, not so much anymore. You know, I, I want to focus on uh, my goals, which are, for example, you know, my channel and live streaming and doing cool stuff in Minecraft. So yeah, most most games have been like rather unappealing to me as of late. Probably because I've gotten back into playing guitar. Uh, that's the real game to me, right? That's the real game. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead with that. I think we've found what we're looking for here. And I won't go grab my axe. I'll painfully break this very slowly. Uh, Thomas, don't even worry about not having money to support for even a second. I appreciate you being here and watching. That's uh, that's amazing. Thank you for tuning in. Right, we've got noises in the ear. We've got Prepo Switch off here with cheers and bits. No message of that one, but thank you nonetheless. Appreciate the support. we got... Sleep Sheepy here with Cheers and Bits as well. Also no message, but thank you as always. I don't know why, but I like watching people play Minecraft more than actually playing it, says Divian Sh Shiloko. I can tell you why. It's because, like, if you watch any of the Hermits, for example, like, you know it takes a lot to do what you see in an episode. So it can be kind of demotivating, which is like what we talked about earlier in the stream, ironically. Like, that things, when you see other people doing cool stuff, like, it should get you amped up. But especially if you don't have the time to play, that could probably be a demotivating thing, right? But, you know, us us hermits are uh, doing a lot in our episodes. We're full-time Minecrafters, and, and so, you know, you can find it just more enjoyable to see people do a bunch of cool, awesome stuff and not have to bother with it yourself. Happy King says, yeah, time is a big problem. Absolutely. You know, like I always, I've been saying it for ages. Like, if all of a sudden this all stopped and packed up and we couldn't do Minecraft videos anymore, you know, I'm not sure I'd continue playing because I'd have to have a job. And then all of a sudden it would be like, you know, what do I do with my time? Because this is my job right now, playing this all day. Would coal look good? Probably would, actually. Coal would look great. But I think we need something closer to the stone brick texture just to help them meld together. Essentially. I guess we'll just keep building this the way we did the last one. There's also the case of putting some slabs down across the front here. Now why did I jump off of that? X, honestly, do you love your job? Of course, man, I love it. It's great. I've been my own boss for the last, like, nine years and... Not quite nine, more like eight, but, you know. It's, uh, it's been great. Like, I can devote one hour per day to playing the game, but I can watch vids and streams even in bed, says Divi. Divi and Shlocal. Yeah, there you go, you know? You're not going to achieve a lot of an hour a day. I, I wouldn't want that to be demotivating, though. Like, you can always play in creative mode and build cool stuff, and... You can always do things different from other people is another good point. You don't have to focus on, like, okay, so the Hermits play this way and they build these big things, but there's other ways of playing this game that can be interesting. You have to use composters. I've been trying to tell you that for a while now, says hi. My name is. Yeah, all in good time, dude. All in good time. There's a lot to be done in this area. 
Asuma, what was your opinion on the Game Awards yesterday? Ain't got an opinion because I didn't see them or didn't know about them. Award shows aren't terribly interesting to me. They're just kind of like industry... Industry models to help, you know, promote and... Give, uh, give... You know, limelight to things within industries. There's also a lot of criticism of them as well as people, um can be quite sceptical of award ceremonies, ceremonies and prize shows and, you know, ideas of uh, folding hands in back rooms and whatnot. Hey X, do you have any tips for making a building palette? Yeah, just, uh, you know, make one. Like, look at it and see, see what looks right to you or not. For a person who does not play games for a living, do you think video games are a waste of time? Says not the bobber. Um, it's hard to say. Like everyone's different, right? It depends what you want to do with your life and your time. I, I just find that sort of that's that level of self-indulgence, that kind of entertainment. It always, for me, comes with this like nagging feeling that I should have been making something, right? So my current job, you know, is making entertainment for people and being creative and coming up with, you know, builds and ideas. And I love it. It puts me in this space where I'm like thinking and challenging myself and, you know, exercising the creativity. And that's meaningful to me. And that means a lot. And whenever I play a game casually for fun or whatever, I just get this nagging sensation of like, I should have done something else for this time, right? I didn't get it as much when I was younger, but I get it the older I get, the more I want to be focused on making something. So, you know, it, like, it depends on the individual, but that's just me. That's just how I feel. And so, you know, I'm in a position now where I'm playing computer games to be creative, but that could all, that could all change. Right, I need some more basalt, don't I? I'm not sure if I had that much more lying around. While we're here, we'll get rid of uh, a few blocks that aren't going to be a part of this anymore. Advice for people in high school, please, says McKenneth K. Cool, well, that's a tricky one. Like, if I could give advice to my former self, I'd probably, uh, I'd probably not even listen to myself, right? I mean... Being a teenager is like just an incredibly interesting part of your life. Um, but it's also one that seems completely folly to doing all the wrong things. And then you get older and you look back at your behaviour and you're like, Oh, if I'd have just done that or just done this. My, my advice would be, I don't know, in general to whatever situation you're in, whatever the problem is, or the lack of problem. However you're feeling, always, always maybe try and take things with a bit more seriousness than you would, you know. And uh, and be be kind to people. It's it's easy when you're younger to get caught up in social pressures. You might not even be aware of and be mean to others. Maybe in school, there's like someone that gets picked on, and it's easy to like join in and be a part of the group, like. Follow your better instincts. Follow that voice in your head, your conscience. All right, because uh, when you're at that age, it's easy for that thing to get pushed down. But I think it's it's better to to listen to the voice of uh, reason and that nagging voice that tells you to do the right thing. Right? Where did we get the basalt from? I could have swore there were more with it. It must have come out of this uh, nether box here. Let's go get some more basalt then. Uh, right, we've got noises in the ear. Rebecca11, gifting the sub to Thomas. Thank you ever so much for gifting the sub, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Thank you for supporting our community. We've got Neon, Willy, uh, Neon Willow subscribing with the Prime. Neon Willy, jeez. Jeez, there's a, there's a, uh, a mouth typo. What do you call that even? Uh, a freaking wild dog is here for eight months as well. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate it. 
We teenagers are quite dumb to an extent. I hope I grow up, says Spirits Maker. Hey, if you're self-aware of the stupid things you'll do as a teenager, that that's that's a start. That's all I say, that's a start. And uh, I'm not hating on teenagers. Jeez, I was one. I think that's something uh, older people do a bit too much, is like... Uh, you see teenagers being reckless or doing something silly, and it's like a bit too easy to forget that you were one once as well. I was thinking earlier about like the pandemic that we're going through at the moment, and I was just feeling like for all, all these people out there that are, you know, missing out on important parts of life, or it's all getting sort of shaken up. And then I started thinking about what age group is that actually that's most affected? Like, who's going to be most... Uh, generally speaking like affected by the current situation and i would say i would say 30s based on my own experience like if you're 20 and below like i think that's a real like this is gonna damage you this uh pandemic and you know in life we all get damaged by things we go through but you know it's part of being a person really um and i think this pand pand pandemic is going to be especially hard on people under 30 it was kind of my thinking, right? But, you know, someone could be over 30 and just do the circumstances of their life for whatever reason. It can just come at the worst possible time. Uh, not, not, trying to, not trying to make a de definitive statement, but I just think in general, the closer you are below that age, the harder it's going to be, the bigger of an impact all of this is going to have on you. Yotsi says, I miss my high school graduation and prom. And my entire freshman year has been online. Yeah, and these are big deals, right? And you might not get to... You, know, you won't get to have some of those things back again. I mean, I feel like I've had things taken away from me, but um, because of this, we all do. But perhaps a bit more bearable than it is for some other people. Quite, quite possibly just based on sort of age and what you'll be doing at different ages in your life. You know, if, you're, if you've lived a long and fulfilling life, then it's going to be a little easier to endure some hardship. But if you're, you know, young and fresh and want to get out there and have fun and it's all walled off at the moment. Hey X, do you like listening to piano music? Absolutely. Love, love, um, you know, a good, a good piano performance, whatever you want to call it. Love listening to Chopin the most, I think. When he says it gets difficult at any age. True, true. You know, like, like I said, I'm not trying to make a blanket rule, right? And I'm not trying to say it's easy for some people or other. I just feel like age has given me a bit more resilience and more of the things that you need. Whereas for kids growing up with this, like, you're a developing human being. And this is a very strange time to... You know, you, all the norms that kids would go through are going to be different for these current generations for a few years. And I think that can be damaging. Whereas if you're older, you, you've developed, you've got some resilience, you know how to deal with this. Not not trying to say that you can't be upset by this or anything like that. Just, uh, just that I think it's more likely it's going to hurt younger people more than older people. That's just... That's just my take on it. You know, I haven't done any research or whatever. Just off the top of my head thoughts. Um, some people didn't say saying in in uh, chat that kids need to socialise. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely they do. I heard an anecdotal story the other day that made me quite sad. That a uh, a baby who was born in March, I think, hadn't seen anyone because of the pandemic and has like really bad anxiety and cries a lot when they see people outside of like mum and dad and having a hard time getting them to be around people. And that is like a direct consequence right there of, you know, lockdown and isolation. So, um, that's just tragic, says Fader Freena. Yeah, I mean, it broke my heart when I heard that. I thought, poor kid, you know, like, that's what can happen when you're at such a young formative age. Something like, you know, not seeing people can really mess you up and, uh... Dang, it's just hard. Okay. Um, right, so now we're moving on to these blocks again, I guess. And we're going to change up our ceiling palette to include these ones. So let's get lots of these materials prepped in the hotbar. 
So we'll have a stack of those. And a stack of these. Now we've got those all down the bottom there. Hopefully the kiddo who are dealing with that will be able to bounce back, says Purinkle, the enemy. I, I very much hope so. Of course we would. Um, I don't want to be a downer or pessimistic, but... I, you know, I don't know really, but when when you're a baby and, and a child of that age, something's going to be really deep, you know. They can end up being um, you know, deep scars or however you want to analogize it. But of course, wishing the best for them. Okay, so it's around here that we use those tiles less, so we'll sprinkle a few in. won't go crazy with it because it's probably hardly going to be noticed. Although in this area, in this area, maybe we should go, go into it a bit. Here's another tip, by the way, when you're doing random block palettes like this. Something Scar taught me was, and I, I, to be honest, I haven't followed this along too much. But if you remember an idea like this at the beginning of randomizing blocks, is try and give yourself some little rules. So if you've got three blocks, maybe you're going to place down twice as many as this one as that one. And whenever you place these ones, they're going to be in a little group together. And that will bring out something extra out of the randomization that you've got going on. And that can do a lot for a build. It can be very subtle, but it can just tell a bit more of a story. I'm not going to do that here because otherwise I'll end up tearing the whole thing out. But just think about that next time you do this, right? You put the blocks in the hot bar, you're going to have a stack of this, then you're going to have half a stack and half a stack, and when you place these ones, you're going to put them four or five together at a time always. And then when you step back from the build and look at it, that those little rules, they'll sort of create something extra out of those blocks. It's a really cool way of doing things. But as you can see right here, we're just going for the random. I am, I am trying to perhaps use those polished ones just a little bit less because they've been used uh, on the floor below as well. All oh, right, that's one higher, of course it is. Oh, so that means we're missing some slabs back there. Well, we'll go around and do that after, I think. And we're just starting to bring in a little bit of darkness now. I've been waiting for that moment where the darkness comes in. That's an important part right there. Let's see, we've got a noise in the ear. It's Kale Al uh, butchered it. Kale All -L -L Arian, 99. Thank you. I'm sorry I butchered your name. Gifting a sub to Socio the Sock. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Fribble says I need a hug, lol. Let's get some internet hugs in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we all need a hug from time to time, right? I remember talking about that uh, in another live stream where it's just like, it just hit me one day. I hadn't hugged anyone for months and it just felt like awful. It just felt awful all of a sudden. Well then, we're sealing up quite a large area. And we'll be ready for a little step back real soon, I think. Oh, do you know what? There might be light sneaking in through those gaps. So we'll probably nip round and sort that out now. And then, that's the last pillar of that area. Uh, there'll be plenty of space to continue this corridor, that's for sure. Hey X, how do you know what a good block palette would be for a build, says Unteachable Games. Well, you put together your block palette, you look at it, if it don't look good, you've got to try something different. There are things you'll learn along the ways that help you with building, and things you'll put in your skill set, but you know, it always starts with doing. If you want to be a good builder, you've got to put in the time. Okay, I think what I'm going to do here is just put slabs all the way across if I can, because... Uh, that'll also prevent mob spawning. 
So I might as well, just in case it becomes an issue. Let's just use the rocket here. And, right, where am I? I'm stuck here. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Oh, no, wait. Oh, it's terrible. Wait, no, it's good. Oh, uh, wait, where am I? Jeez, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Where am I supposed to be? Down in that space? Oh, jeez. Okay, it's time for an ender pearl. Because that did not work. Yes, I believe I am now where I want to be. But it might just be that this isn't a very passable place. Ah, that looks like it. We're just going to hold shift and walk along here. Trial and error is how a lot of people learn and that works, says Jod Reagan. If you think of the mini game we played yesterday, the second one, a lot of that was trial and error in a way, wasn't it? Just, uh, you know, placing down blocks and figuring out as we went. Placing down blocks, that's not what we were doing. We were changing the values of uh, inputs to logic gates. What's your opinion on Minecraft Bedrock 1.16, which significantly broke speedrunning? All oh, right, um, not really got much of an opinion on that. First live stream says a lighting too. Welcome, welcome, dude. Six smart sharks, sir, says McKemp. What you want me to say that? Six smart sharks, sir. What? Six smart sharks, sir? What, is that going to sound like something else when I say it too fast? What's up with that? Okay, I will fix that. Actually, the redstone isn't active, so... I can fix it right now without breaking anything, I believe. Huh. Give me some of that redstone. There we go. That is supposed to be a slab. It will have to be a blackstone slab in order to somehow slightly fit in. Uh, also, can I get my redstone back? Yeah, that's, that's just going to have to be an anomaly there, right? That being said, you can see through this gap back there... This one can be a full block. I don't think that breaks anything if that one's a full block. So we'll do that. Now it's a little more contained. But, you know, a little secret that only you and I know about. Down the end here, there's a little gap. <gasps> it's a gap. <laughs> Probably not a bad thing. You know, like, one of the things that can make a build, again, look, look nice is, or more detailed is to just do that occasionally, you know. And you know what, I think I'm going to do a little bit of that here and there, just to prove the point. Try not to go too overboard with it. Uh, let's try that one. And maybe not too frequently either, but we'll put in a few. And uh, not that way around. Because then i got to place a block on Well, actually, go on then. Go on then, we'll put it around that way. Oh, how do I put my block underneath first? Look at this. All of that, just for just for that. <laughs> now I wonder if that should be Dark Prismarine, actually. Anyway, we'll move on. Oh, I can hear a, a tactical tickle in the area. Oh, it's a... Sp Where have you come from? Uh, you can spawn on top of there. Right, so we should probably finish placing down some uh, kelp blocks real quick. While we're here. Okay, up there wouldn't be a bad spot to have a little break. And now let's... Oh, it's dark in here, isn't it? As it should be. Yep, needs to go all the way to there. Can you please say, job done, says Simmy. There you go, job done. I said it. Uh, would you ever put this much time and effort into a single player world? Yeah, if if single player is what I was doing, then yeah, like this is this is what I do, right? I put time and effort into things. <laughs> uh, 
and we've fallen off the edge. Okay, now I'm just thinking somewhere around here we've got to build a staircase down to the area below. And also, you know, the glowstone that I put down here, it's good. Oh, mobs might be able to spawn in this spot as well. That's something to watch out for. Might want to put a little light source on the side. Not sure I'm going to take care of that. Um, maybe use carpets. That, that fits in pretty well, like some carpets across here. But the glowstone is probably a bit too strong, I think. So we might want to change what's going on there. Because it still feels very bright over the front here. And we've actually cleared up a lot of where the sunlight comes through. So before we get too carried away with this, let's finish doing the little bit of roof work we've got going on up here. And then I think we'll turn our attention to the staircase that goes down below, right? We've got to suss that out. Okay, now this one can go in these gaps. And then we need some more of those. Why is your Nightbot so good at his job, says Ice Beast Goat? Probably because it's an automated machine. <laughs> is it a machine? Let's change that to that. Hey X, I've been wanting to tell you about rabbit's feet. I think I have a solution, says that soft boy. If the solution involves cats, I don't want to know. Because <laughs> I haven't been spammed a gazillion, bazillion messages about cats recently. That's not happened. That's definitely not happened. Okay, so that's good for that bit. Remember we were doing the thing with the stairs. Let's just make sure that that variation uh, gets kind of continued. Might as well do one like that. Rebecca says, but you could make a farm with cats. What sort of farm would that be? A poop farm? I don't want to look after all those cats. Jeez. Think about all the maintenance. They're going to want your attention all the time. Okay, up there we go. And we sort of caught it up now. So that, that definitely feels really good just to have that kind of thrown in. Uh, so we want to work on the light levels. I feel like this has now adjusted the light level here a bit. We also got light coming in up there, I believe. Possibly. There might be a roof on it. So once we seal all this dried kelp stuff off, this should get a little darker down here. Same for this one over here as well. Oh, do we put four on that one? What is your favourite season, says Ice Beast Goat. I always say the current one. I think it's just because, uh, you know, what you're currently doing tends to be the most exciting. And maybe I would have said season six was, you know, terrific earlier in the season. But now that this season's had its legs and there's been so much going on and we've done these mega projects, you know, I'm just loving, loving what we're doing right now, really, I guess. It's hard to pick favourites. Someone on the Reddit posted uh, like a timeline of all the different Hermitcraft members. It was really quite accurate. It's actually not in the ground. Anyone else online to help? Up top, all oh, right. Well, maybe Impulse is able to help.
Uh, Jibber Doctor says, where are the older hermits you played in previous seasons? You'll have to go look them up. If you want to know what they're doing. They're still around. Some hermits are still on YouTube. Some are... Uh, I don't know, some quit completely or did other things. So you do not get bored of repetition at the start of every season, says Sykes. Uh, funny enough, funny enough, the start of a season is probably the least interesting bit for me because you have to build all the farms. It takes like ages to get to, you know, a place where you can do a project like this, right? Um, oh, I've done this wrong. For me, the end game is where the season starts. Like once, once you're like six months into a season, that's when things get more interesting. Okay. Right, so uh, I just kind of realised I was talking about where we're going to put this staircase down to the area down below. I maybe shouldn't be building this up yet. Maybe shouldn't be building it up. Now the portal is going to be flexible, right? That can kind of go anywhere. And the middle of this space, which I do want to get sussed out. Actually, that... Is this the middle? I can't remember. Yeah, that, it's actually sort of aligned. I believe... So it's that block and that block, right? So it's sort of diagonal to there. Not quite to there. Hmm. Am I looking at it right? It is. Yeah, this is the this is the very middle. And if we look, it's kind of in line with this. So I've got no idea how this is gonna work by the way. So we might go down down like like this way, that way, and then that way again. And I probably wouldn't want that to start here because it's kind of nice to have a lot of this repeating. So you probably walk all the way down here to then go around and find your way to... If we start digging it out here? Nope. This bit? Where, where on earth are we? We're here. Hmm. Now, I'm not fussed by stuff like not lining up properly. We've got like a... Two wide thing linking up with a three wide thing. We'll probably do the same again. So I think we've got to look at this like it's going to wrap down around between a pillar. Um, so potentially it could start here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll goof around with making a staircase. So if we were to come down like a slab at a time. I just need like a tiny bit more of this. So if we were to come down at a slab at a time, we can think of it like, there's a slab, then that, boom, boom, and we go to here. Okay, except we want to turn the corner already. I think slabs is not going to work. That's quite the ways down to go. So let's think in terms of this being straight up stair blocks, right? So now we're just going down. Oh, wow, we can see the room. Yeah, then we're going to have to stop at one level and turn. So that would be the next bit. Then we go down like this. And we wouldn't get very far each time. And we'd have that pillar right there. We'd be right up against it on all sides. Which is probably the best way to integrate it. Okay, so where are we? We're on the corner. Uh, stair block ends there. Stair block starts here. Is that right? Yep, we've got room for one more. So that's the three that lines up with that. And then the stairs would start here again. So as you can see, it looks like it's going to be incredibly tight. But considering the way we've done things already, the floor would then just be... I mean, the floor could be one block higher, right? It can be this height. So I think that's how we're going to put in our staircase, basically. How long have you been on Hermitcraft X, says this is Acorn? From the beginning. we got Spriggan the Dryad here for six months, saying you and the other Hermits inspired me to play vanilla again. Well, that is awesome, dude. Glad you're playing. Hopefully you're enjoying it. What was your favourite farm to build this season, says Aurilla? Let's think. Um, the one we did, the bee farm in the beginning was pretty cool. 
It's one of the ones we did recently. I've got this feeling like one of the ones that I did. The Netherwalt farm was pretty amazing. The mushroom farm was alright. There's one I'm sure the phantom farm was good but sort of super simple. What did we do after the mushroom and phantom farm? Not the rabbit farm though. I feel like we did one in between. I just can't quite remember what it was. Ghast. Yes. The ghast farm was absolutely bonkers. That's the one. That's I've got this lingering feeling of like we did something awesome this season. When it comes to farms. That's it. It's blatantly that one. <laughs> Oh, the pufferfish one was really good too. It was definitely the gas one giving me that feeling though. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to rip these blocks out. Okay, we're going to put those there though. And this is going to be our drop down. I didn't actually want to drop down. Into the area below. So, we'll start figuring out the details here. I reckon we probably want that back. The gas farm was amazing, but I think the bamboo farm looks really cool, says Seasick Rhino. Yeah, peeps really like the uh, way I did that. You know, earlier in the season, my goal was to try and make farms really different. But uh, I kind of got demotivated when I saw what Tango was doing, because I, I felt like that was initially what I was going to do. Those big towers were going to have, um, like, interaction with mobs. Like, you'd see them come by and you'd have choices on how to kill them, but I kind of kind of lost my steam for that pretty quickly. Um, that was sort of the original idea. But I have, I have, you know, I have stuck to making the farms a bit different and interesting this time. Which is good, that's what we want. But yeah, I just realised that, like, the more recent ones we've been doing, kind of lost sight of that a little bit, just because of... I guess, um, you know, really trying to power through with this project. But you and Tango are very different creators, says Rebecca. Absolutely. I know. I know. It's just, uh, it's just, it's a silly thing, right? It's like a barrier in my own head, right? There's no reason I can't do this or do that, but it, it got, it got in there. That idea got in there and it caused me to not start doing projects that way. And then I've kind of just stuck. But, you know, the bamboo farm is a, is pretty much what I wanted to do with my mob farms, just it's not a mob farm, right? Uh, so then we'd have floor at that level, which isn't slabs, but possibly could be slabs. I never know what way around to do that. you got to think about mob spawning and stuff like that, right? Okay, so now you can see where the uh, dried kelp is going to go. This song's beautiful, by the way. I love, love this music. There we go. And then same on that side over there. And then, you know, we're probably going to end up with this pillar coming down as well, right? Wait, where is it? It's over there. Yeah, we've got to design a whole roof for this area down below now. Dang. This project's getting crazier. I definitely never built a kelp farm big enough for my needs. Thank goodness we've got Kralis out to help us, you know. Because uh, this clearly ain't, ain't big enough for our needs. There we go. Have we got any more? No. Right, so we kind of get the, the feel for that now. Yeah, so we'll probably have the stairs stop right here and it'll be level at this portion. And then that gives us a good one, two, three, four, five blocks up to the front of this. And I'm probably going to change the block palette here. And I've got to be careful because there's redstone closely linked around all these blocks. Didn't really think of that earlier, but you know, that's how it goes. Right, so we need some dark prismarine next. And then we can work on that more. Make a music disc playlist in the brewery. Interesting idea. I'm going to add some note blocks to that machine. That's the episode that came out today, right? With Rendog? Where he suggested adding some music to it. 
and I was like, that's a really cool idea. That's why we're doing that. Uh, there'll probably be a ender chest where we're going. Right. Dark Prismarine time. Let's use Mumbo's portal. Oh, wait. We've got a portal here. <laughs> where is Mumbo's portal? I think I can see it. I think I see purple. What is that? That's, that's definitely a portal of some sort. we got Machi3107 here for nine months saying, If my builds would be uni even like that, then I would go crazy and rage quit. Uh, whenever you feel like rage quitting, step back from that. What is going on here? Why am I not surprised that this would be Mumbo's setup? I am not surprised. Uh, this is not convenient. I'm going back. <laughs> this is just going to slow me down. Okay, okay. We need another portal. Is this further away? I don't know what direction I'm going in. I don't even know if there's another portal here. Aha! Machi, thank you for the resubscription. What's with these hermits and these portals, eh? Also, there's like a portal right there on the roof. <laughs> I think we're going this way. Yes. Sweet. Absolutely sweet. Dark Prism Marine, where are you at? Oh, has the barge got a drop in at the top? Yes, yes it does. Beautiful. Which blocks are these? Oh, they're all right. No wonder they're left over. Firework rockets, interesting. Is that it? <laughs> Weren't they like a diamond stack? Is that really it? What's going on here? What kind of shop is this? What kind of shop is this? Where's the ender chest? I had to look for one. People are saying outside. That's where it used to be, then it got moved inside, right? It's moved outside? Well, it used to be inside. Should probably use a pearl. Like that. There you go. <laughs> Right, let's uh, pop out here then. You don't look out here. There's no shop out here. Right. <laughs> like, move the shop inside, then then just move it out here again with another barge. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Oh, it's two diamonds per sack. Right, well, well, we'll drop off an extra... Oh, ender chest. Ender chest. Ender chest. I see an ender chest. Okay. Okay. I want to, I, I need to put this back in my under chest. My word. Okay. By the way, we've been doing some lag busting uh, in this in this area. Yeah, we've been doing uh, like some trying to trying to make the frames better and stuff. And I went around yesterday and must have killed like a hundred and fifty zombies in the caves. Now. That should improve performance, maybe not frame rates, but to me it's felt like the frames are getting a bit more stable over in that space, which is good news. I forgot my ender chest says Pug. I believe I did not. It's on my base, right? 
This time, we've got to use the... Uh... Ow! Ow! Ugh! I'm, I'm here! We've got to use this thing over here. Ha! That's what we should be doing. You gave five diamonds instead of four. Yeah, I owed him a diamond, right? Because I got three stacks. Okay. Uh, does this thing work in here? It's not stone. Oh, oh Prismarine is stone! Oh, busted. Mojang. Top secrets revealed. And that is the more expensive way. Alright, let's go build a staircase. Uh, just thinking out loud for a second. We could have it wind in from this direction. But I, I think I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to overthink it now. Alright. Not going to overthink it now. Too much overthinking ain't good. Come on. There we go. Hey, Asuma. Just saw your new episode. Il Mango made a cat farm that produces a ton of rabbit's foot in his peaceful challenge. You could take inspiration from that, says the Beyonder. Yes. I am I am very aware of, uh, of the cat farm. The Guana. I, uh, I have taken three stacks from Impulse, therefore I have paid six diamonds. Well, that one was clearly wrong. Okay, then the floor of this room, which I think needs to be a different material, will be uh, at this height here. I feel like we'll probably need to mix this up and try and do something a little different from above now. Okay, next little bit of building is here. So we've got to go get some kelp blocks and possibly some blackstone. I say possibly, i definitely getting some blackstone. Boy, you are hearing a lot about cats lately, says Jod Reagan. I know, right? I know. I've heard nothing but cats. Okay, so let's grab some of this and see what we can make of it. Like, I'm definitely going to take a bunch of those. I think I want to have some of these down there as well. Probably use some wall blocks on occasion. Get some of that in there. Then some of that. Now we need our dried kelp. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's go build. Now everyone's got me intrigued about the cat farm, says Mini T Bun. Yeah, basically your mango made a cat farm. And then I got a gazillion messages about it. There is no shortage of people telling me about this cat farm. Now I'm just wondering. Maybe this bit here is actually covered. How do I not have any slabs of that beret? I don't know. Maybe that bit's actually covered in there, but here it's definitely going to be a drop, right? So this is where I want these materials now. Oh, this is this is not as much wall space as I was thinking it was a moment ago. I kind of thought this would be a lot. Yeah, so it might be nicer if that's recessed back. And it would make this area here a little bit bigger, which it doesn't really need to be, but... Okay. Uh, hmm. so it's going to be like four wide. 
Could have that there. And that, you know, that adds some much needed depth, I think. And then we could hang a little soul lantern off the top. Okay, then we've got to do that again down at this level. So this is why I think it might be productive to perhaps do something different around this space. It's going to be tricky to figure this stuff out. Probably going to need more blocks as well. Uh, let's play some more... Oh, wait a minute. How... Yeah, yeah, okay, right, I need some different type of blocks now. I always like working with dry kelp blocks. A lovely texture and nice dark green, says Jod Reagan. Uh, yeah, th building this has certainly turned me onto them a bit more now. Now I'm like, oh yeah, this is actually pretty awesome. Didn't do much with them last season, right? Okay, we want some of those, and we want some of these. For the next part. Um, also... Struck away some of the sandstone we're accumulating. What did I, uh... Oh yeah, I remember what I thought I needed. Over there. Those. We need those. Yes, you did. Kelp shop. Says our Fressa. Uh... Kelp shop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, did it sell kelp? Yeah, it did. It sold tons of kelp. Oh my goodness me, it's all coming back to me now. Absolutely. Absolutely we did last last season. <laughs> we did build with it. Big time. Okay, and then we use all of this in here. And down at this level, same thing again. Is that right? That is right. <laughs> I just need to dig out more sandstone. Guess that can get filled in over here. Oh, what's happening? Oh, I was just jumping all of a sudden. Nope. Okay, so somewhere around here, the stuff's got to change, and I think the way to do it is about there. Alright? But then when you're down at this level, We've got to figure figure out what that's like, and not just once, but twice. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a gap, then we'll put you know, even that feels a little bit close. So if we go back to about there, then we'll probably have slabs at this level. So I'll put in some sandstone and then some slabs, and we won't see the sandstone, so it's good. Okay, and then we'll probably have these things start off immediately. In fact, maybe even they'll start there. Hmm. Oh, maybe not. That's actually a little bit low, isn't it? Trial and error, peeps. Trial and error. That's how you get things done. Do foxes kill rabbits, says Fish Duck. Great question. You can put a looting sword in a fox's mouth. I was reading about that recently. What was I reading? I think it was something to do with turtle eggs. Maybe I was thinking about for scoop farming or something. Um, yeah, no. If they, if they kill the rabbit, that might be... Problem is, then we've got to grow the baby rabbit, rabbits in the automation process into adults. And that could actually be quite tricky. Okay, so there you go. We now know roughly what height these blocks have to come up to, right? So, oh yeah, that's a point. These would come into this space a bit, I guess. And we're one slab shy. Of course we are. Of course we're exactly one shy. Just gonna come over here and pinch one. I 
Oh, I love this part of the song. The piano is beautiful. So this thing's going to be... Hmm. Right, what we'll do... I reckon... Is use those walls at this point. Definitely thought I was going to be using a lot more of them, right? Uh, does that actually cover up the sandstone gap? I think it does. I think it covers it all up. Boom! Now it's real dark. Now it's real dark down here. Oh, I've done that the wrong way around. That goes there. Is that how we did it? Yeah, yeah, that is how we did it. I went. I don't think I reset the end after I went. Okay, uh, now we need some lighting in here, obviously. That's an important part of what's going on. Got to be careful things don't spawn in the meantime, either. Right? 100% beautiful, says Kurt Games. My build? Or the music? Probably the music. Come on, let's face it. It was the music. There I was, thinking you were talking about me and my building. Oh... Oh, I thought it was good for a moment. Obviously, it's terrible. Right, let's uh, let's go up here. Chuck those in there. Torches can go in there. Uh, but we need iron. We need iron, 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 iron. Iron. Yeah, that is a lot of nuggets. And now we've got all the soul lanterns, thanks to that. Okie dokie. Have we got room for these in here? That's probably a good thing to have lying around. There you go. Uh, can we go this way? I mean, the build's right there. I'll just bust a hole in. Don't mind me, just going to uh, take a little shortcut. Right, so where do we want these lanterns to be? Bear in mind the light level's got to be good around here. <laughs> See, even when it's on the ground, it's not good enough, essentially. Which is kind of worrying. So maybe the light should be something different here. Does light shine through a wall? Let's find out. It does, and that is a really great way to hide a light source. Well then, we know what we're doing. So much for the soul lanterns. We'll still use those for details. Why do I have the nuggets? I thought I threw those away. This place looks like the hallways of the Ministry of Magic from Harry Potter. I do not remember the Ministries of Magic in the Harry and the Potters, but uh, if you say so. It's got a bit of a... Oh my word! Right in my boxes. Naughty. Scram out of here, you scamp. Where'd that guy spawn, eh? Where'd that guy even spawn? I guess we'll just take the glowstone. Aha! We can just use this to get down here. Now, our light levels should be much more tolerable down here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is actually put the lanterns like in front of their little faces. Now, what's above there? Sandstone. So, I could, in theory, go ahead and... I think I'm going to put those up here as well. So the decoration lighting is like that. Very good. And then who knows what's going to happen in this area down here. That is a project for another day. There is so much to be done. Wow. So much to be done. What's your favourite tea and do you like fruit teas? Says Bangdroid. You know I do... 
The problem with uh, the problem with like having green tea and fruit teas and stuff is just there's so much variety and don't always fancy it. I've had them in the past, but like I even had enchilada flavored green tea once. It was good. It was raspberry and enchilada flavor, and it actually was sort of enchiladery. Very strange, but uh, it's just not something that I like want to buy boxes of on a regular basis, like I do, you know, every day or uh, English breakfast. Right, the next part is a grind again. I think we've done our, we've exercised our creative liberties for now. We've got another grind coming up, and that is the grind of building all of this kelp on these back walls. So if we get the right materials together, uh, which we shall do now, we're not using those. We're we are doing slabs, so we'll get the slabs up in here. Uh, we're done with these ones, these coloured ones here at Enderman. The basalt can go over here for now. Uh, the wood stuff can go there. Cool. Okay, so we're going to need a lot of those and a lot of those and a lot but not so many of them. Actually, no, we're still going to need tons of those now to think about it. Then we're going to need polished blackstone bricks and then some cracked ones as well right which I swore already had a lot of here we go yeah so now let's go place all these blocks it's gonna make a big difference I'm actually gonna start off with the kelp kelp and kelp and these slabs we'll do first is that right yeah What does it mean, robotic face? I don't understand, says none. I got no idea what robotic face means in the context of what we're doing right now. Not a clue, my dude. Hey, we've got a noise in the air. Sorrel the Soul is here for 12 months. That's a whole year. And we got Content Chimp here with a Prime. Thank you so much to the both of you. Appreciate it. Spangleboo, welcome to the chat. Also got 1,600 peeps watching. Be sure to hit that follow button. Wow, that is some crazy zoom right there. That. Oh, this is perfect. One second. One second. Hit the follow button. I wonder if I can record the old oh, the effects are still on. Hit the follow button. Hit the follow button. That sounds amazing. Let me turn the effect. That sounded amazing. Hit the follow button. Cool. What else should we add to the thing for this stream? Evil X in the house? Hit the follow button. <laughs> oh, good God. No. Oh. Oh. That was some, that was some F5 maneuvering. Oh, jeez. Jeez, Louise. No! Leave me alone! What have I ever done to you? What do you mean, potion factory? Shut up! Your brethren. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, there's more! They're howling at me. Oh! Oh, get, get wrecked, buddy. Get wrecked. Oh, my word. Oh, poor old X. Just tries to make funny noises and echoes and oh. Now I've had a heart attack. Mm, some good water right there. Hit the follow button. What? Huh? What, what have I got to do? Voice in the sky. I don't know. Voice in the sky. Telling me to do something. While we're at it, it's time for some proud plugs. That's right. I'm proud of what I do here on YouTube. Except we're not on YouTube. Now you sound like a complete idiot. Well done, X. Well done, X. Hit the follow button. Oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> I got some other channels on the YouTubes. If you never go and check them out, if any of that looks interesting, music channel, says channel, live streams on the second channel. Swing by, check them out. Subscribe. Help support what I do. Thank you for uh, taking the time to, to listen to me. 
shamelessly self-promote, as they say. I say I'm proud of what I do. We've got four channels. By the way, uh, I ran some ads for my Asuma Music channel, right? Got a offer to have 120 quid matched. So I decided to take AdSense or whatever it's called, Google Ads, up on their offer. Targeted, did some keywording stuff, like made a little campaign. And oh my goodness me, is it bad. It's like one click on a link costs about one pound. And I set it to target specific regions, being America and England, with both places being my predominant audience, and it's English speaking. And 10% of the traffic went to places in India. I was just like, why is it going to anywhere outside of where I've asked? And then I was just like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> this is terrible. I, I wasted about 40 quid on it. Although in theory, they should match me for half of it. So it should only be, uh, it should only cost 20 quid. I mean, a little experiment, waste of money, but yeah, really painful. <laughs> Not stonks, yeah. I don't know, like, I know it's a huge industry, right? Right? Lots of people are using it to get clicks and to get traffic, but, like, is that the price they're playing, paying for it? Like, a pound per click? That is just ridiculous. What is a quid? It's a pound. Asuma, how do you make your sound effects? Uh, I press the button. Hit the follow button. And then, and then that happens. That's how I make my sound effects. I've got a I've got a mixer here. It's called Go XLR. I love the clipping thing though. I watch the H3 podcast and one of the things I love is their sound guy like just sort of creates this like layer of uh, lore and um like depth to the show where they constantly refer back to things that they've found in the past by sound clipping them such a such a cool way to really like like integrate uh, sort of the history of what you're doing into what you're doing soundboard I don't know what you call it it's a sampler or something right like he's sitting there uh, taking snippets of when people say funny things and then using them to like bring it back it's really good I need that I need that going on Oh! You see? See, now that needed to be a thing. But I can't do it because I have to do it live. You know, that needed to be a thing. That moment where I went, oh god. And almost died. Might be a good idea to start doing the ceiling now, actually. Because, uh... It's going to be painful to do it later when it's dark. Well, it's not that painful, actually. Yeah, it's not that bad. We'll, we'll continue on. Excuse me. Mm. Oh, make my voice high pitched. We've got a high pitch request. Okay, what do I say high pitched, people? Okay, that's what I really need to know. By the way, this thing has some auto settings that I've never really messed with. Squirrel things, bananas. Hit the subscribe button. Say, job's done. Yeet, pogers. Spot of teammate. Okay, there, there we go. Uh, right, one second. Do you fancy a spot of teammate? Now I get to hear what that sounds like back. Do you fancy a spot of teammate? Ah, that's not that funny. <laughs> Right, let's let's reset some things here. We're having fun. We're having fun. Okay, so now, uh, I, I literally do not want know what to say. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive, and seven, eight, nine. Can't remember the rest of the thing. Now I get to listen to that back. Testing one, two, three, four, five. I didn't five. do anything. Once I caught a fish alive, and seven, eight, nine. Can't remember the rest of the thing. Wow, the presets don't do anything. That sucks. Well, let's clear that one. See you later. I'm learning how to use this thing. I'm learning how to f***ing use it, okay? Have you got a problem with that? I hope not. Because I don't know what to suggest if you do have a problem with it. You were doing very good, Cezaze. Thank you, thank you. 
<laughs> and then the rest of that sentence is until you started playing with your mixer. <laughs> it's Corrales online. I might be like, Corrales, I need more dried kelp. <laughs> I've made like two stacks <laughs> of everything I've used so far. All for the mega build, right? All for the mega build. One for all and all for the mega build. That's what I say. Apparently. <laughs> there are worse things to play with. Yeah, don't play with fire. Put that fire down. No, don't put it in your mouth. Jeez, don't play with fire, kids. Hey, X, you should use a pinch of lapis in the build palette. Oh, it's funny you mention that. I've actually found a place to use lapis. Yeah, it will, it will, because the greens have got a slightly aquatic vibe, so blues will pop in here. Oh, that's the roof. That's it. Turn on notifications. Oh, you're doing the YouTube thing, right? Hit the bell as well. Ask for ask Corrales, uh for kelp for your high pitched voice. Yeah, I should use this when I interact with the other hermits sometimes, right? You know, this thing can store like twelve samples, and then you can. I mean, I've got a other bunch of things. Oh, I see. Oh wait. Ah. <gasps> uh, oh, hello. It's tight. Okay, right. Oh my words. So, here we go. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Got no idea how this sounds. But we're testing it anyway. Right, now I get to hear it back. Testing one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Got oh, no. no idea how this sounds. But we're testing it anyway. I like the last one. The last one's good. Oi you! You! Hit that follow button right now! Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I like, the, I like the sound of the last one. Last one sounds good. <laughs> you kids! Get off my lord! I should have recorded that. I want to hear what that one sounds like, but I can't. Because I didn't record it. I'm going to clear the last one. What's this one? Do you fancy a spot of tea, mate? Oh, jeez, I do, actually. I'm going to make a cup of tea after it. I'm going to have some eggs and salsa after this one. <laughs> I think you're scaring people away, X. Imagine this is their first Asuma stream. Yeah, definitely scaring them away, right? No curry, Sisenda Dan. Do not say that word around me at the moment. I'm cutting. Okay. I'm not having any curry till after Christmas, is what I told myself. I think I'm going to be able to make it. Oh, but I'm going to have a mega curry after The thing is, I, I'm probably not going to enjoy a mega curry after Christmas, because then, cause then I'm going to be all bloated from all the Christmas food, right? So I'll probably need, like, a bit of time. I think I'm going to cut after Christmas as well, just not as not as much. not as. Uh, I'm going to try and develop a bit more of a long-term strategy. Because I'm, I'm kind of like just chewing through calories at the moment. I think I've cut almost 7,000 so far in like 10 days. Which is pretty hefty, pretty steep. But it's safe, apparently, according to things I've heard. <laughs> I know how to calculate everything. I'm eating curry right now, so this isn't the number. Good for you, man. Love me a curry. How about an Omega Curry? This is not the Robert. The problem is, when you get past a certain point, it don't work. Like, you're too full. So, in order to have a feast, like, there's there's kind of like a limit to how much I can eat. And for me, it's my, my two curries, two sides, and an arm bread. Like, that's it. I can't really go beyond that. And to anyone who's had... who hasn't had Indian curry before, I can't recommend it enough. Try yourself uh, a korma if you're not so sure about having hot and spicy stuff. And then if you're okay with a bit of bit of heat, try try yourself a um, a 
chicken tikka masala or just a just a chicken masala or a vegetable masala, right? Do you or have you ever done a physique progression post on Twitter or something? Says C Pom Pom. Now nah, I don't bother with that. I'm not. I'm not a like picture taking person of myself. Uh, right. Let's grab this and convert it with that. Do you like fire curries? Is not the bother. Yeah, yeah. I've had a few fire curries here and there. Now I think about it. In fact, what I had today, I used some thigh curry paste to make it nice and tasty. It was good. My Indian cur Indian curry is the goat curry. Curried goat is a um, Caribbean dish that I quite like. Caribbean. Do you say Caribbean or Caribbean? What do I reckon my next Omega project will be, says Slurry Sheller? Well, after I've done building the uh, potion brewer, it's using the potions, right? So it'll be something involving mass potions, essentially. Dang, man, what a corridor. Just having that depth, just for the sake of it. That's that's the Hermitcraft way right there. You go the extra mile here on Hermitcraft, okay? You go the extra mile. Even if there's no road, you, you build a road and go the extra mile. So this thing's going to probably have like one more and then cut off. I don't know quite how it's going to work, but I'm pretty sure however we figure out the walling in this area, it's going to go a little bit further. So we'll, uh, we'll take it a little bit further. So what I'll do here is like that. Uh-huh, let's build these up. Assuma, this place passes the kid test. If kids saw it IRL, they will run through very fast. Yeah, I think I know what you're getting at. Yeah, yeah. They see a big corridor and they'll run for it. Kids just kids just have loads of energy they need to expel. I was walking past a uh, school today, like a kid's school, right? And like the kids, they're just they're just jumping up and down, and they're running around, and they're screaming and yelling, and it's like, you know, obviously that's what kids do, right? But like, I think about it through a different lens now. I'm like, they've like got all this energy that they just constantly need to expel. It's really weird. It's really weird. Why can't I be more like that? You know, I want to have all that energy. Kelp and whelp says none. Kelp and whelp. Um, Shizo says, I tried curry, fine with the spice slash heat, but you don't like the taste. Oh, my man. My man, make sure you try at least a few different curry dishes, because they're not all the same. And some of them are just gorgeous, you know. I don't, don't want you to be missing out on a good old curry. My word. It's criminal, you know. It's just not on. Can't be not enjoying a curry. Uh, let's jump here. There we go. Time to seal all of this in. <laughs> Boric Joker says, I never had curry. What does it taste like? I honestly don't know how to describe the taste of it, really. Um, they're all They're all quite different from one another. Did you go for a run today, says Christian... Fiend. I did. Um, I done some interesting metrics on my uh, Fitbit, right? So the lowest resting heart rate I've had was 39 when I was... I can't remember if it was this year or last year. I think it was last year when I was running uh, in the summer, like, a lot. Like, like running for, like, 40 minutes to an hour at a time. Easy. Um, so my resting heart rate was, like, 39. 
But then over time where things change and you focus on different activities, you know, it goes up and down. But I hadn't ran for ages and then I got injured and so like my cardio has been just slowly dipping. And it got to the point recently where I think it went as high as 58. And that was it was it was around 53, 54, and then it jumped up when I started taking my medication when I got uh, an infection recently. And it was weird just to see it jump like five points, but it did. It jumped all the way up. And then that was right after I took the medication and got over that. I started uh, getting back on the running regularly. 20 minutes every other day, deliberately taking it easy to begin with. And every day it's just slowly ticked down a point at the time. And I think it's like 49 now or something like that. But yeah, it's just steadily coming back down. It's so interesting to look at on the chart because it's just clear, clear like um, cause and effect going on, right? Right, I think it's time for this thing to come down. Do you believe in homeopathy? I don't really know enough about that to know if I believe in it or not. There we go. Well, isn't there a skeleton causing trouble around here? Sneaky! There are two of them. That's not that's not good. That's not good. I think the path's just gonna sort of naturally end here, isn't it? It's just gonna be like a sort of bit of a no-go zone. Let's uh, grab some kelp. Alright, that's gonna come out to about here. So then we got the back wall. Then we'd have one more kelp pillar, I guess. That's what I'm trying to suss out here, isn't it? Like, where's the next kelp pillar? So it's not there. And then I think the black stone wall will probably just come over and meet it. And then there's a question like, we definitely got to have that in front of it, I think. Yeah, that might that might just be it right there. That's, that'll sort of be the shape of it. Well, that's That's not what I want. Break up the wall with chiseled blackstone. Hmm. Nah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna leave it. I've you know sort of settled on my palette already, so to speak. So yeah, these these blocks will fill up that space. This thing then needs to go here and across to there, and then up to the top. Uh, let's bring up. Do I hear a witch now? Goodness, wait a minute. Would that? Would it look like that? I guess it would. It just looks a bit off because of the way it meets it here I guess a witch sounds good why are they why we got witches spawning around here you know it should all be uh, mob proof in theory okay yeah that comes up to that level and then we need slabs here And then we just do all of this, I guess. Right, so we want those. And we got that there. Excellent. Uh, Will, 26 help has subscribed. Thank you so much, Will. Appreciate it. Appreciate the subscription. It's a potion factory. Yeah, this is a potion factory. Aha, uh -huh. now it should be all dark and sealed in there. Should look super cool. Where's the witch? Where's the witch? I hope it's not like somewhere in all of this. If that makes sense. Could well and truly be. Like on the stairs they can spawn. Oh, that looks good. To me, it feels like this has been wrapped up neatly here. <laughs> Dang, I, I hear a witch like somewhere here. I can't take you seriously when I hear witch laughing, says Magic Dust 2. Okay. Fair enough. Pecky Witch. Witch. Pecky Witch. Pecky Witch? Maybe it's in a cave. I don't know. Uh, right, so. What's next for us? Just thinking about what blocks we're going to use. I guess we're done with the dry kelp right now, funny enough. Oh, that's right. We needed some more of these. 
Any other witch? Maybe it's on the roof, like spawned on the roof and fell down or something. Like the roof up there, roof, you know? Okay, I guess we've got to do some big old slabbage now, because we've got to yeah, get all of these going, and it looks like we're going to be a little bit short on... Uh, probably nothing for now. Oh, I did want to put in some lights. That's the other thing we've got to do in this area. So, let's go grab those. Now, one thing we did in the other area is we had some that would be at the back of the room and some that would be between the pillars. So, if we were to hang them between these, I think you would see them because they're kind of close. So, I think we're only going to hang them at the back is essentially the way this will work. If we come over here, though, um, the spot that we're going to hang them in... Do I have... I have these blocks as well. I'm going to hang them right there. Let's, uh, let's tidy up this quickly. Okay, that's good. Oh, did I? Oh, I did take the chains out. Right. Now, based on what we'd seen elsewhere, the distance from the floor is kind of important. So we'll do that. That that to me looks about right. And then up here, I'm gonna surround it with the slabs. And that totally works. What do you reckon, peeps? I think that totally works. We'll actually take the edge off of it being dark, is one... There you are! Oh, rude! Rude! All this time. What do you think, peeps? With or without light? The darkness is good, but it kind of emphasizes some of the lighting bugs a little bit. Yeah, so I think I'll go with lights, actually. And people in chat seem to say with... Yeah, it just makes it a bit more enjoyable, I think. So if we go to every single one of these and just do them one by one. Now the question of like, do I do them across this side? I think the answer is going to be no. I think you're just going to look back into there and see it. My word, would I stop getting poisoned already? Goodness me. Blue lights, yeah, yeah, and that'll that'll help pop a little bit, won't it? Because of uh, the blue popping from the the aquatic. The aquatic greens. Bam. Oh, we've got nothing going on over here yet. Nothing going on. Huh. Always got to make a little jump noise. Hurry, hurry, I need my curry. Alright, let's stop the talking about the curry now, okay? <laughs> I'm starting... Starting to not enjoy this. No, we're good, we're good. Uh, we need to swap that out for this. Literally just going to do it like this, so that they're all in place and then we don't have to walk around with them anymore, right? That's the way I roll. Even though we're out here in the open, we're just going to do it like that. And then they're all good for the future. So here, I wonder if how it lines up compared to the other end because it's relatively similar. What did we do down there again? So we'd have the free and then yeah, we'll investigate that in a moment. I did just put the kelp away, unfortunately. Uh, let's put the last one of this in, and then we can not have to worry about that. Yep, so that's the last one of those. So it would be wait. No, would it be there? It might actually come up a little too close. Because it would be in line with that bit. I'm not sure what's going to happen here, you know. One, two, three. It would literally be here. And I put... Oh, no, I didn't pull the kelp away. So, we're looking at... Like that. It literally comes up against this thing. And you know what? I don't think that looks quite as bad as you might think. Once we uh, modify the platform here a little bit, I think that'll actually end up being okay. So, yeah, I reckon that's what we'll end up doing here. And we do actually have some of these slabs. Oh. Hey, 
No. Oh, if that would work properly, you can sometimes jump. Why is it doing that now? Oh, it's not going to work properly. Okay. That's just basically a footnote for later. Is there any tool for kelp blocks, says Simi? I believe, I believe that the hoe is the tool of choice for the kelp block, right? I feel like this hasn't had too many of those in a while. There we go. Very delicate process. Making sure we're doing it right. X, any book recommendations? Classes are finally over, says Minty Bun. The last one that I really enjoyed was Atomic Habits. I'd highly recommend that book. If you're looking to uh, you know, develop some good habits, change, change for the better. Try and make an improvement, whatever. Just uh, that was a book that really worked well for me. It translated a lot of concepts I already knew of and really kind of put them in a regimented sort of format that I could uh, get on with. Dang, this thing's looking great. Okay, I'm pretty happy with it getting extended down to there. Definitely got to lower the light level of that glowstone. And then sort out those steps. They need some sort of uh, spawn protection, something. So then coming back to this space over here, I feel like we need to perhaps work on this a little bit. Just filling in this space. Can I do it over here? Oh man, it's so dark at this point. Hey X, is there a hermit you'd like to collab with more, says Scrubby J. I'd like to collab with all of the hermits more, really. I'm just, I'm just so, uh, like, time management sensitive with how I do stuff, right? Like, I'm very, uh, hop on this, do that. It's kind of, kind of rare that, like, I get to spontaneously do stuff with other hermits. That, it was really fun to record a Ren, if you've seen the latest episode. That was just really quite spontaneous. I, um... I needed to start recording my episode because I had so little time to put one together. And I was just like, and then Ren needed some help, and I was just like, I'm just gonna go help Ren. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna forget about all this, get it done on time. And then we hung out for a bit, chatted, uh, recorded, and then yeah, it was, it was kind of cool, kind of like spontaneous, right? It's the way to do it. I'm not normally spontaneous though. I'm usually Mister. Well, in five minutes, I gotta go walk over here and do that and you know I got this chunk of time for that and that chunk of time for this this is my stream time this is my eat time my exercise time that's how I usually operate so I'm a bit of a pain in the bum to uh, meet up with oh we've got loads of slabs all, all set up for this it's almost a bit hypnotic you might think I'm like facing forward or, or downwards Actually, no, you, if you've played Minecraft, you can probably figure out I'm facing upwards. Uh, so all of this down here is done. All of those bits, nice. Wow, that's done. Excellent. So we've built a fully fleshed out corner on this side. I guess we can work on fleshing this out now. In fact, I think I'm going to go through and just place these now. Sort of all over the place at the frequency that I want. Oh. <laughs> yeah, something felt really wrong when I walked here. I was like, wait, what, what? And then it's like, oh, okay. Okay, there's an opening there. That makes sense. 
Yeah, look, we just used up all of those, so now we'll uh, fill up the space around it. Okay. And that is another big section in this area done. Sweet. It has really come together extremely well, hasn't it, peeps? Uh, Wolf Dragon says, whatever happened to Jassassin? Doesn't seem like he's a part of Hermitcraft anymore. He's a part of Hermitcraft. He was helping us with um, some connection issues just the other day. He's just not active with uploading. Which is cool. Um... Yeah, I love I love this. Just uh, sorry, taking it all in at the moment. It's good. Hey X, I'm more of a technical guy. I can't seem to tough it out. Once I've got three to four farms set up in my world, is there tricks to find enjoyable projects to work on once your main goals are done? Yeah, just think about all the things in the game and like what you can do with them. I think if you get too fixed into sort of like maximum efficiency mindset you miss out on the opportunity to do things different and therefore to engineer different ideas and solutions so uh, giving yourself like hey I'm gonna make a farm but it's gotta look cool or it's gotta I'm gonna make a creeper farm but it's got to be built inside of a giant creeper or you know you put two things together and give yourself a like an angle or an edge and when you create constraints around what you would do you you tend to find something interesting can emerge so to speak you know? Hit the follow button. Do you fancy a spot of tea, mate? Hit the follow button. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing anymore. Just felt like pressing those buttons. You know? Uh, peeps, it's the end of the live stream today. I really hope you've enjoyed it. We did a lot of work. It was good. Great progress was made. Be sure to hit the follow button before you head out of here, right? Hit the follow button. And you can also hit the raid button in chat. Because Mr. Ren Diggity Dog is streaming, so we're going to go raid the Ren. Um, thank you, everyone. Take care. And I'll see you all tomorrow, probably. Bye-bye.